Hello, and welcome to this podcast where we'll explore best practices in molecular testing and targeted therapy for hormone receptor positive or two negative metastatic breast cancer. We'll be discussing the key biomarkers to test for, the timing of tests, and the decision-making process when it comes to treatment. So let's start, Roberto, with some of the most common biomarkers that we use to test for in these metastatic patients. So the two most common biomarkers that are being tested is P3 kinase alterations. That's one. And the second one is ACR1 alterations in hormone receptor positive disease. And I think I will focus on those two ones because they illustrate a lot of those concepts. Where should you test in the primary tumor, in the liquid biopsy, or in a metastatic biopsy? And I think it all depends on what biomarker and what line of treatment you are in. There are, of course, additional biomarkers to be explored, AKT, P10, TMB, MSI, etc. Some of them are rather agnostic, MSI, for example which is mostly given, rarely in breast cancer, after the third line of treatment. TMB, same, very late, exceptionally, to be honest. There are others, NTRAC, for example, conceptually tumor agnostic, and there are others which are more specific, AKT. So you had mentioned um, PI3 kinase and ESR1 being the most important. Uh, I would agree with that. So I tend to send testing at every progression. You know, certain things change over time, such as an ESR1 mutation, which is acquired under selective pressure of an aromatase inhibitor. That's when you'll find it uh, over time. Initially, you know, at the first diagnosis of metastatic disease, maybe you'll find it in 5%. But as you go through multiple disease progressions, you'll find it in up to 40%. And if you find an ESR1 mutation, this makes a patient a candidate for treatment with an oral SIRD, a selective estrogen receptor down regulator, such as uh, elicestrant. I usually send, you know, initially a tissue biopsy, and then at each disease progression, I'll send a liquid biopsy with or without a tissue biopsy. And mm -hmm. so one of the reasons to do that is just practically, you know, patients in the clinic, disease is progressing, we're drawing blood for other reasons. It's very easy to just draw a few extra tubes for a liquid biopsy. And the turnaround time is very quick. Whereas if you are setting up a tissue biopsy, that can take several weeks. You know, first, you have to Absolutely. arrange for the biopsy, and then you have to get the results back. So that can take some time. Absolutely. And I think you, you point out several items that we can discuss here. One is, for example, the yield, which is completely true. But the caveat may be, for example, that for some variants, tissue is better than liquid, and for others, it's the other way around. For example, if you take a liquid biopsy, which can be on serum or can be on plasma, and, and we can discuss the technicalities later on, whether it's a centralized testing or decentralized testing. Basically, what does it mean? It means that the so-called pre-analytical variables are crucial. Why? Because you're looking at tiny fractions of variance, tiny, very tiny fractions. For example, in the blood, you also have so-called cell-free DNA, which is DNA coming from everywhere. It can come from the leukocytes itself in the blood. So what happens? If you take a blood sample and it takes too long to get to the lab, you start to degrade the immune cells. DNA gets out. The DNA yield gets up. The fraction of tumor yield is diluted. So you might get false negatives, depending if the so-called pre-analytical conditions are not exactly standardized. I think we can summarize by saying that you know, the time is now to do molecular testing for hormone receptor positive or two negative metastatic breast cancer because there are therapies that we didn't have even five years ago that we have now where eligibility is determined by these molecular biomarkers and that some of them change over time 
So it is not enough to test at one point in time. We have to test at several points in time. And then we need to consider the type of testing that we are performing. Are we doing tissue biopsy, liquid biopsy, or both? So yep. this is clearly uh, yep. in evolution, and there will Absolutely. clearly be more molecular markers. And if I can add one single message from my perspective as a pathologist, which is very simple, know your essay. This is so crucial. And I noticed that this is still a very long road that we all need to pass together. Know your testing. Thank you. Thank you, Rina. I really enjoyed this conversation.